Hello and welcome back to National Park Travel Planning. I'm Robin with Consider the Wonders and today we are going to answer two questions and that is who's going with me and how am I going to get there? Planning for yourself versus planning for a large group, multiple families, those are two totally different animals. So you definitely wanna know before you start going down the road, who is gonna go with you because that is going to come into play with all of the other things that you do, including and especially the activities that you do because some things could be limited by the number or could make it better the more the merrier so definitely make sure that you've got that locked down also take into consideration the age range of all of the people that are going with you so all the way up from babies to maybe your grandparents are going with you if you're going as a whole family uh, as you're planning, you might want to make sure that you're doing some different things for all of those uh, different ages, especially if you've got a baby, you know, there's just extra time that needs to be had whenever you have a baby. Of course, like they got to eat. Of course, you know, we got to eat too. But I'm just saying there's extra things that happen whenever, you know, you need that time with little kids. Knowing who is going and maybe what they wanna do whenever they're on this trip with you is definitely going to play a part in your planning process. Okay, now let's get into how you're going to get to the park that you're going to. And who's going with you as well as the location of the park are going to be factors in this. So if you have so many people going with you, you might not want to pay for plane tickets for all of them to get there, or you may be coming from different locations, uh, or you may be wanting to go on a road trip. Maybe you've got a larger group. How big of a car, you know, do you need? And what does that look like? Some parks you can only get to a certain way. So let's talk about all of the different options. The first one is gonna be walking. So you may be planning to go to a park that's actually in a city, and why not? Those National Park Service locations are some of the best ones. In New York City alone, there are 10 National Park Service locations. And so if you're planning to go to that city, you can actually uh, see each of those different sites, the Statue of Liberty for one and you actually can walk. I mean, you might have to ride the subway too, but if you're staying in the city, you can do a lot of walking and that would be absolutely amazing. Maybe you already live there and you have a national park that's really close to you. Walking, great option. Another one is gonna be biking, and this kind of goes along with those parks that are located in cities, those urban parks. One example is gonna be the San Antonio Missions National Historical Park. They have an absolutely ridiculously awesome biking trail that goes right along the river and you can go from each section of the park to the next on a bike. So that particular park is actually broken up into, gosh, I wanna say like five or six different locations. And you can use one of the bike rental companies that's located in San Antonio and you can just ride your bike all along to the different things. I mean, what a great opportunity to be outdoors, to see some of the amazing sights and get some exercise all at the same time. Okay, so the next one is probably what most of you are gonna be doing for um, your national park, and that's gonna be going in a car. Pretty much every national park service location is equipped for cars, there are a few that you can't actually get to in a car, but that's gonna come a little bit later. But for the most part, having a car inside the national parks, especially the really large national parks, is a really good idea. So that way you can get to um, some of the different locations. Also, there's just the opportunity of being able to move around a little bit more easily when you have your own vehicle. So cars, 
always a good option. Another one is gonna be going in an RV. So of course, RVs, there's all different kinds. You've got your RVs that you drive, you've got your RVs that you pull behind, you've got your vans, you've got your truck campers. Like there are so many different types of RVs. Um, and they're just a little bit different than a car in terms of Sometimes you just have to drive a little bit slower whenever you're pulling an RV. I know we personally, my family, we have a fifth wheel camper, which we love and we pull it with our truck. And the differences of us traveling with our truck to a national park versus traveling with our truck and our RV are different in terms of how long it takes us to get there. So in planning, we have to make sure that we allocate extra time whenever we're bringing our camper with us. Also, you might wanna keep in mind whether or not the park that you're going to has RV camping. Some of them don't, some of them do, some of them don't allow it. Some of them don't allow the length of the camper that you might have. Um, that's gonna, we're gonna talk about that in another section, but just keep that in mind as you're going. Sometimes if you're going on a road trip, like for us personally, we love to stop at some of the smaller parks for just like the day or a couple of hours as we're traveling to another site, to another park. So if you are doing that, you wanna make sure that that park has RV parking in its parking lot or that there is a place where you can park for your RV so that you can still go out, see some of the great sites and then like move along on your way. Okay, let's talk about the bus. So there are companies out there that do tours, bus tours to some of the national parks. So you can actually take advantage of that if you want to. Uh, if you do end up going to the park, maybe in your car, they may have bus or, bus, bus? Bus or shuttle services inside the park so that you don't actually have to drive. You can just ride the shuttle. Another great option is to take a train to one of the national parks. Now, of course, this is limited. Like they don't obviously go to all of the national parks, but the um, National Park Service actually has a partnership with Amtrak and they have a great thing that's called Trails and Rails where you can ride to some of the national parks they have National Park Service employees on the trains that tell you all of like the great things about the parks can help you uh, with once you get there to know like what to do and things like that. So that's awesome. They have like these Amtrak vacations. It's so cool. Um, they have like a great one that goes from like Chicago to um, Glacier National Park, which I would just love to do. If you've ever done that, please let me know. I wanna hear how great it was. So if you're looking um, to get onto a train and do that kind of fun and exciting, then that's definitely an option as well. Now, there are some national parks that you just can't get to in a car, you have to fly there, or the national park might be so far from where you are that driving there would just take way too long, would eat up so much of your time that you wanna get there quickly and then you wanna to get to the park. So flying, air travel could be an option for you. If you are planning to fly to a, an airport that's near a national park, there's a couple of things that you wanna think about. Um, do you have to rent a car once you get there in order to be able to go into the park or do they have some sort of service that's going to allow you to get into the park from there? Also, another thing would be just the proximity to the airport. Uh, you know, if you're looking to go to like Arches or somewhere in Moab, Utah, there's not necessarily a super close airport there. So you definitely need to think about the amount of time it's gonna take you to get from the airport to the park. Now there are some that like have an airport that's pretty much right there like Yellowstone and it's super close to get there. Um, so just make sure that when you're looking into it that you're looking at the distance 
from the parks that the airport actually is because that's gonna factor into the time that you spend at the park and the things that you'll be able to do once you're there. There are some national parks that are near larger cities, which makes it a little bit easier to fly to them and then maybe rent a car or just get a car service that can take you to the national park. So for instance, like Biscayne National Park is really near Miami, Florida, and also so is the Everglades. And so uh, if you wanted to fly into Miami, then you could be able to go and visit those two parks. They're not that far from, uh, from the city and that could be a good option for you so that you don't spend so much time driving there and then have less time in the park. You can just fly there, have more time at the park and then fly back home. The last option that I wanna talk about is a boat. So there are some parks that you can only get to via a boat, maybe a plane, to like Dry Tortugas. This is another Florida park. And uh, you have to go from the Keys over to the Dry Tortugas. And you can take a boat ride over there. It's actually a really nice boat ride from what I've heard. And you can do some really cool things over there. Uh, but that's just another factor that you need to think about is, you know, when does the boat leave? How long is the boat ride? Those are factors in determining whether or not that's a good option for a way to get to the park. All of these transportation options are going to have like their positives and negatives. One of the big things is gonna be the cost. And again, going back to who's going with you, that cost could be significant determined by whether or not you have two people going with you or whether or not you have 10 people going with you. You also need to look into whether or not you have to make a reservation in order to get in to some of these parks via this way, especially if it's on a boat or on a plane that's going directly into the park or if there's a specific event that you're going to that you have to get a reservation for in order to drive into the park all factors. Thankfully, traveling to the national parks is possible. Um, all of the new ways, old ways, same ways that you can get to the parks is there. Now you just have choices and options for how you wanna do that. This is a big step in your planning process and is definitely something that you need to decide so that you can continue on your planning journey. And with that, we are done with this section, so I will see you at the next one.